Hey, how's it going, do it yourselfers? So it's October 20th, 2019. However, where I live, it still gets to about mid 90s to close to 100 degrees outside. Now I still prefer the heat over the cold and I feel pretty lucky that I live in Southern California where I have this type of climate. If you happen to live in this type of climate, have, but you're unlucky enough to have a car that has an AC that doesn't work and you don't have one of these AC gauges, but you need to diagnose the problem with the system, you can still do it without an AC gauge as long as you've got a hand and it's also capable of feeling the difference between heat and cold. Now to be 100% accurate, you may not be able to diagnose all the problems with your AC system without a gauge set. However, you're going to be able to diagnose more than likely a bad AC compressor, uh, an AC condenser that's not working properly, a clogged orifice tube or an expansion valve. Now in order to be able to diagnose the problems with your AC systems, you need to know a little bit about how the car, how your car's AC system works. Now they all work uh, pretty similar, but there is a slight variation into how these systems work and we're gonna quickly go over that right now. So on this dirty old 2009 Pontiac G3, you get your AC compressor down there, you get two lines coming out of it. The smaller one, which is this one right here, is gonna be your high pressure line. So your AC compressor is gonna be compressing the refrigerant, pushing it out of this line, and from there, compressed refrigerant, which is in a gas state, is gonna come around on this setup and on the other side of the car is going to go to the dryer or the incandescent element which is the part of the AC condenser on this car. The job of your dryer is to basically remove moisture from refrigerant and therefore protect the different components of your AC system. From there it goes to your condenser as we mentioned which is this radiator looking uh, piece which on this car is back here and then with the help of your fan your condenser's job is to cool down the compressed refrigerant in your high pressure line which is in a gas state and turn it into a cooler refrigerant which is going to be in a liquid state. From there, the liquid refrigerant is going to come out of this, this line which is down here. It's going to travel around and on this setup it's going to come back here and go to your expansion valve which is this guy right here. Your expansion valve's job is to basically remove pressure from the refrigerant allowing the refrigerant to expand rapidly and as it expands and goes from a liquid state to a vapor state the refrigerant gets very cold and from there it goes to your evaporator which is um, inside your dash and usually a very hard to get place. From there your blower fan blows over it and it uses the air that's inside the cabin to blow over it, therefore exchanges the heat from the air that's inside the cabin through the evaporator back to the refrigerant. From there, the refrigerant comes back out through this bigger line and this is your low pressure line. And from there it's basically a straight shot, shot on this setup that you have an expansion valve. It goes from there straight back to your AC compressor. Now the slight little variation comes when you have an orifice tube instead of an expansion valve, which we have on this car. It's going to be a little hard to show the compressor on this car, but basically you got your compressor, the high pressure line comes out of that, goes to the AC condenser up front, from there it comes back out here and it goes through an orifice tube instead of an expansion valve, which on this car is going to be right in here, the orifice tube is going to be in here. Now the orifice tube does more or less the same thing as an expansion valve. It forces the liquid refrigerant through a very small orifice, therefore allowing it to expand rapidly, cooling down and going from liquid to gas. From there, again, it goes through your evaporator inside the cabin, your blower fan blows over it, all that good stuff, and comes back out to the, from the cabin, through the firewall, back to the engine compartment. Now where this setup differs is that instead of a drying element, on the AC condenser, on the high pressure side, it has an accumulator on the low pressure side, right after this uh, low line or low pressure line comes out. And the accumulator does the same thing as a dryer, which is to remove moisture from the system, but also works as a storage tank for liquid refrigerant that's coming uh, from your evaporator. Your liquid refrigerant should not be allowed to enter your AC compressor because your AC compressor is there, is meant to compress refrigerant in a gas state and if liquid refrigerant enters your compressor it's going to ruin your compressor and that's why you have the accumulator on these setups right before the AC compressor on the low pressure side. 
All right, so I hope I haven't lost most of you by this time. <laughs> if this is really confusing and you want a better explanation of this, I have only about a dozen videos on the subject. I'll put links to them at the end of this video that you can check out. But before we get to the quote unquote hack and me showing you how you can diagnose problems with your AC system, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, but also click on that bell notification so that you're notified of my new videos that will be coming out pretty soon. For the sake of this video, we're going to have to make a couple of assumptions. One is that you have refrigerant in the system, or at least enough where your AC compressor is coming on and being engaged. And also, your AC fan is working. So yeah, if you check those off the list, you, and you're still not getting cold air inside the cabin, and you suspect there's a problem with your compressor, your condenser, or your expansion valve or orifice tube, here's how you can check. So yeah, with the car running and your AC compressor engaged, what you want to do is check the temperature on your high pressure line. Now, if you do have an infrared thermometer, I suggest you use that because if your compressor is compressing the refrigerant and it's working properly, it's going to produce a lot of heat on this high pressure line. And if you go to touch it, you could burn your hand. However, if you don't have an infrared thermometer, then you might want to use a glove or, you know, get your get some water on your hands and touch this line very quickly and if it's hot to the touch then that means your compressor is compressing the refrigerant generating a lot of heat so therefore your compressor is probably working fine so yeah from there the high pressure line goes to your AC condenser and then after your condenser you want to put your hand on the line again or use an infrared thermometer if you can help it now on this car it's going to be hard for me to show you but it's that line that's coming out of the condenser that's back here and if you put your hand on that it should be noticeably cooler than the high pressure line that was coming right out of the AC compressor. If it is cooler that means your AC fan is working right, your condenser is in good shape and it's cooling the refrigerant. Alright so next you want to follow that all around and where it goes through your expansion valve or orifice tube. It goes from there again as we talked about to your evaporator and where it comes out through the low pressure line you want to put your hand on the low pressure side and it should be very noticeably much cooler than the line that's going through your evaporator or your expansion valve or orifice tube. If it's not then that could indicate a clog or a problem with your expansion valve or orifice tube and or your evaporator. All right, now admittedly this is not a 100% proof or bulletproof plan on diagnosing problems with your AC system but it should point you in the right direction. If nothing else it helps you understand how your AC system works, therefore allowing you to diagnose problems with it much easier. So yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying the uptick in video output that's coming your way. Uh, being absent for more than a few months, I feel like I owe you guys. So there's going to be a lot more videos coming your way. Also, I started my Patreon page. I put a link to it in the, on, the, on the screen somewhere. And again, if you want to help out my channel, make sure you subscribe, click on the bell notification. Also check out my other videos, either on this side of the screen or in the description box or in the suggestion box, That's, those will all help. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.